A battle between Google's first go-around at the foldable market and Samsung's fifth year of iterations and refinements. There is a lot to talk about when comparing these two devices, but in this video, I'm going to keep things clean and concise and really only discuss the segments of these two phones that I think really matter in terms of like everyday practical real life usage and the implications of that on you guys. So I'm going to try and keep this video around five to six minutes. This is future me editing past me's video for present day you. And as you can probably tell on your screen, we are much closer to 10 minutes than five to six. I just happened to elaborate and add additional more details than I initially intended, but everything you want and need is definitely in here. As you guys are watching though, let me know if you are on team pixel with the peach emoji or team galaxy with like the crystal ball or galaxy emoji. I'm going to finish this so that you can also finish this. Looking at battery life, typically that's something that doesn't impact me too much because I have a charger available at most points throughout my day, be that a power bank, wall, my car. But if you're someone that's worried about battery anxiety and getting through your entire day without a charger, flat out the Galaxy Fold 5 is just going to be the way to go. The Pixel Fold, guaranteed you're going to have to charge at least once per day and it doesn't have the fastest fast charging so that might be a little bit inconvenient. Or on the Fold 5 for example, if you watch my day in the life video with my my girlfriend Bria, you're able to get through basically your entire day, um, you know, early morning until around like 11 30, 12 o'clock at night with like around 10 to 11 percent battery, playing games, browsing social media, and the internet. And so, if you're looking for a device that's going to more consistently get you through your day, it's just going to be the Fold 5. On the Pixel Fold, you're getting the Tensor G2 chipset, really wish it was the Gen 3. And on the Galaxy Fold, you're getting that brand new Snapdragon processor. Now that's just an arrangement of letters and numbers. What you have to know in terms of practical everyday usage is that for your heavier everyday tasks like multitasking or high-end gaming, the Galaxy is just by far going to be the more capable device. I compare um, two really big popular games at the moment, Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. On both of those games, you can play on the Galaxy Fold 5, everything at absolute maximum settings, and it's going to breeze straight through those games with no problem. Pixel Fold, you can play those games at around a medium to sort of around medium to high settings, but even like Honkai Storio, for example, you can't really get a consistent 60 frames and you really can't pump out those higher texture qualities. In addition to that is the heat that you're getting out of both of these devices. The Snapdragon just doesn't have to work as hard and the device just does not get as warm as the Pixel Fold does. The Pixel Fold, when you are pushing it, it lets you know that you're pushing it. Both are foldables and both have outside displays. And I've been someone that, even with the Galaxy Fold 4, have always been in the camp that the outer display on the Galaxy Fold is comfortable, functional, and you can reach everything that you need to reach on that outside display because it is a thinner form factor. I've never had a problem with it. I like it a lot. And... I can definitely also say that I like the Pixel Fold's outside display more. I just do. It's wider and feels more just like a normal phone screen in your hand in that closed form factor. And the Pixel Fold is a thin device and so is the Galaxy Fold thanks to the closed hinge now. But because the Pixel Fold is a thin device, it's not cumbersome and it doesn't feel like a chubby, unwieldy device to hold in the hand and use. Both are really good but I do prefer the one on the Pixel Fold. Additionally, because the Galaxy Fold is more like a hot dog setup when you're opening it, or the Pixel Fold is more like a small notebook or passport format when you're opening it, I have to say that that Z flip mode where you kind of have it unhinged like this uh, is just better on the Pixel Fold, if I'm being completely honest. There are some times when I'll use it on the Galaxy Fold for say like Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel because you can have it in sort of like that battleship format and you can see like the top screen and the bottom screen at the same time. But on the Pixel Fold, it's just better because because the format is wider so you're getting more on both sides of that that includes in YouTube when you have like a video on the top and say like your comments on the bottom or if you're in the camera app the form factor is just better for that usage so using the pixel fold and the galaxy fold extensively something that I just cannot shake is that there's a surprising lack of complementary software features to complement, like the folding form factor, right? So on the Galaxy Fold, for example, there are gestures for multitasking. You can swipe with two fingers anywhere on the screen to activate your multitasking. You can turn apps into bubbles. You can have three windows at one time. You can rearrange those windows any way that you want to. On the Pixel Fold, multitasking is 
split screen, which is still really nice, don't get me wrong, and it works really, really well on the Pixel Fold. But after using both, it's really hard to, at least for me personally, shake that it would be really nice to have those additional software features on the Pixel Fold. And it's a shame that they're not there. Is everyone going to want or need those things? No. But for those of us that do want those things and those features are complementary to our everyday lifestyle, like for myself and my work as a therapist, having open, say like my docs, my Excel sheets for billing and for insurances, not having those things is kind of hard. Oh. Um, sorry, got a notification, nothing important. Um, because both phones are foldables though, if you're a content creator looking to stream your camera to your phone, that can control like your ISO, your brightness, your shutter speed, all of those things. Both phones are able to do that. It's really nice. Also, if you're enjoying the video so far, want to stay up to date with other tech content I have coming here to the channel, hitting the subscribe button is the best way to stay up to date. A thumbs up goes a long way to helping me out. And now we're actually going to go this way. So here we're going to go wild cards. These are things that I think are benefits for both devices in their own separate ways and not everyone's going to want or need or care about those respective things. That being that the Tensor G2 is really an optimized chipset for a lot of like voice dictation and language translation, which it does an exceptional job at. And I can say that though the Snapdragon is a more powerful device on the full, if I'm being completely honest, it does compute those things very fast. The Tensor G2 is just a little bit faster. All right, so this is going to seem like a strange comparison. I have the Pixel 7 Pro here on the Tensor G2 chipset. The reason I'm doing this is to pit it up against the brand new Snapdragon processor. And the reasoning in doing this is that A, this is a great deal right now. Um, with the Pixel Fold out, the Pixel 8 Pro is coming around the corner, so you're getting further price drops on the 8 Pro. But the reason I'm doing this is so you can see how the G2 processor fares against the brand new top of the line Snapdragon processor. So just so you guys get an idea. Hi there, can you please assist me? I need help with the giraffes that are stuck in my socks and the hippopotamus that is stuck in my underwear. It translates just as quickly as the brand new top of the line Android processor here on the market. And there are additional refinements on the Pixel Fold and so you're getting a slightly faster experience on that than here. The difference is honestly going to be not a drastic one, but enough just so you guys get an idea. Or if you're a content creator looking to speak out your script instead of writing it down, or for someone like myself, the voice dictation is really good for after I'm done a session with a client. If I want to have it chart out my thoughts um, that I had after sessions, that way I don't forget to jot them down in my client notes later on in the day. That's really, really nice. On the fold side of things, you get the S Pen and Samsung Dex, which if you ask me, I think are really big deals. The S Pen is amazing on this tablet form factor. The last few that I've made, all of the thumbnails that I made on the Fold 4 over this last year were complemented by the S Pen. Being able to take a shot, upload it to my Fold, and then do all of the edits and grading that I need to do on the tablet form factor with the help and precision of the S Pen, I think are a really complimentary experience. And additionally, if you're going to be using your foldable, sort of like a notepad. I actually ran into a subscriber, Dr. Ronaldo. He was super awesome. He's been a huge supporter of the channel for a long time now. Day one. Day one, oh, yeah. Uh, got my Fold 4 right here. Got the Fold 4. We talked a little bit about life, a little bit about the Fold, and something that he opened my eyes to was that he has an app set up for his Fold 4 where it literally looks like a notebook layout. And that's one of those things that I never would have guessed to use my note literally in that way. I usually just use the note app, but there were lines, markers, and it looked like a composite notebook. And so having an S Pen to use in tandem with software like that is really what makes the Galaxy Fold experience a more cohesive one, I would say. Really nice meeting you though, man. I this love meeting my heroes. Cool. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for all your support and love on the channel. I really appreciate Always, it. Always, guys, follow him. He really knows what he's talking about when it comes to cell phones, especially the Fold 5 and the Fold 4. And if you really want to get some information, hit that subscribe button down below. <laughs> Thank you so much, cool, thank you. Samsung Dex is awesome because you can hook it up to a portable monitor or even like my ultra wide monitor here, it's an innocent 40 inch ultra wide. You basically have an entire desktop setup where you can do all of your productivity work, you can watch videos, you can edit your thumbnails and stuff on there as well. Dex 
in terms of utility is just awesome and that with the s pen if you ask me i side with the galaxy suite of this sort of wild card category but if you're someone that doesn't care about those things and are looking more for like the refinements and dictation and translation, then the Pixel Fold is where to go. And let me know if you're on team Pixel Fold or Galaxy Fold. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you are watching this. And as always, peace, love, and adios. Bye guys, and have a great day.